Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. It's commonly said muscles take 48 to 72 hours to recover from a workout. Of course, the duration of your recovery will be impacted by the training variables you use and non-training related factors. But based on how most people tend to train, is it accurate to say muscles recover within 48 to 72 hours and therefore we should wait for this duration until we train again, otherwise we compromise muscle and strength gains? An interesting way to study this is to have one group of subjects perform their workouts 48 to 72 hours apart, while another group of subjects performs their workouts 24 hours apart, and then compare strength and muscle gains between the groups. Two studies have done this. Let us briefly review them and then discuss their implications. This 2018 study from Singapore recruited 30 active men and assigned them to either a 24-hour or 48-72 hour group. Both groups trained this training session with these variables, three times a week for 12 weeks. The 48-72 hour group performed the three sessions with 48-72 hours of rest between them. The 24-hour group performed the three sessions with 24 hours of rest between them. Nutritional patterns were similar between both groups. Ultimately, 10 rep max strength on a range of exercises increased similarly between both groups. Lean mass also increased comparably between both groups. So these results fail to show it's essential to wait 48 to 72 hours until you train a muscle again for strength and muscle adaptations. The second study is from 2016 out of Portugal. 21 trained men were recruited and assigned to either a 24-hour or 48-72-hour group. Both groups trained this 3-day-per-week program for 7 weeks. The 48-hour to 72-hour group performed the 3 sessions with 48-72 to 72 hours of rest between them. The 24-hour group performed the 3 sessions with 24 hours of rest between them. Fascinatingly, neither group experienced measurable fat-free mass increases. I think this is probably due to the impreciseness of fat-free mass as a hypertrophy measure. If more precise measures of hypertrophy were taken, hypertrophy might have been found. Nevertheless, bench press and leg press 1 rep max strength gains were fairly similar between both groups. Interestingly, the effects slightly favor the 24-hour group. But the differences were not statistically different and it could just be the 24-hour group had subjects with slightly better average genetics causing this slight average difference. So both these studies fail to show it's essential to wait 48 to 72 hours until you train a muscle again. Performing three training sessions a week with 24 hours of rest produced comparable adaptations. The research on training frequency further supports the idea you don't always need to wait 48 hours or more to train a muscle again. Quite a few studies suggest training a muscle 5 or more days per week can be perfectly fine for building muscle and strength. For example, this 2019 study by Zoroni recruited trained men. All subjects trained the same exercises and for the same number of total sets per week. But a bro split group trained each muscle only once or twice per week while a full body group trained each muscle 5 times per week. After 10 weeks, back squats, bench press and row strength gains were non-statistically different between both groups, but the percentages for the squat tend to favor the full body group. Fascinatingly, triceps, elbow flexor and vastus lateralis hypertrophy tended to be superior for the full body group. For a full breakdown of the scientific research on training frequency, feel free to check out our video on it. Before moving on, I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Alpha Progression. Consistent training is crucial for long-term gains, and Alpha Progression is a really well-designed app that can help. The app enables you to visually track your lifting long-term progression, which is great for motivation. You can input your own program, or even explore their incredibly flexible custom workout generator. Specify your training experience, what equipment you have, your training goals, whether you want to focus or neglect certain muscles and how often you want to train and for how long. The app also contains a database of over 550 exercises with great text and video tutorials on each. By using the link in the comments and description, you'll have two weeks free of all its features plus 20% off a subscription. If you do purchase the app, the House of Hypertrophy will get 50%, so this truly helps support these free videos. Thank you so much. 
It's logical to think that every single time we train, we want muscles to be fully recovered from previous sessions. But I'm wondering if training muscles under some degree of fatigue occasionally might be perfectly fine. Doing so isn't enough to kill the stimulus and recovery isn't exacerbated. In fact, we have data showing that if you train a muscle when it's not fully recovered, recovery isn't necessarily exacerbated. More on this in a second. In both the previously detailed studies, the 24-hour group, since they were training muscles on three consecutive days, were more than likely training under some degree of fatigue, particularly in those initial training weeks. I purposefully use the word some degree of fatigue in everything just mentioned. Training under extreme fatigue, where the muscle can hardly contract and where you can barely move is probably not going to be worthwhile. There is another factor that is very important. I just said those initial training sessions for the 24-hour group were probably performed under some degree of fatigue. In the later training sessions, I actually believe it's likely the 24-hour group was fully recovering between their training sessions, i.e. they were recovering within 24 hours. This is because your muscles have a superpower, the repeated bout effect. Your body produces a range of adaptations that essentially quicken your recovery durations. These adaptations are collectively named the repeated bout effect. In my eyes, the repeated bout effect is very underrated and underappreciated. Our next video will dissect the science showing the power of the repeated bout effect and what this means for your training. Before moving on to the summary, keep in mind that all the data presented in this video are averages. For some individuals, it could be possible that this information fails to apply. At the end of the day, if you experiment with training a muscle quicker than 48 hours apart, it should eventually be apparent if you consistently struggle to recover and your muscle and strength gains are lackluster. Some individuals may be wondering about the recovery of connective tissues, such as tendons and ligaments. Tendon injuries can arise due to the gradual accumulation of micro damage and tends to be due to a mismatch between damage and repair. Unfortunately, it's not clear how much resistance training may damage connective tissues like tendons, how long the repair time may be, and how different training variables may impact this. So it's not super clear if training muscles 24 hours apart increases your likelihood of accumulating fatigue damage of connective tissue. Even so, remember if you're performing something like high-frequency training, although recovery time between sessions is less, most perform lower set numbers per session, meaning less connective tissue strain per session. Additionally, it is likely different tendons and ligaments throughout your body have different resistances to being damaged, and of course, some people have more resilient tendons and ligaments compared to others. It's possible that regardless of how you train, deloads are what's required to dissipate fatigue damage with connective tissues. Again though, there doesn't appear to be solid research providing a more crystal clear insight. In any case, I do plan to dive into this literature further and have future content around connective tissue and resistance training. We have data showing that compared to waiting 48 to 72 hours to train a muscle again, waiting 24 hours doesn't kill muscle or strength adaptations. High frequency training has also been documented to be perfectly fine for muscle hypertrophy and strength. Of course, it's perfectly fine for you to train a muscle 48 to 72 hours or even longer apart. Again, remember the duration of your recovery will certainly be impacted by the training variables you use and non-training related factors. Nevertheless, the aim of this video was to show the scientific literature indicates it's certainly possible for you to construct a successful training program where you train muscles 24 hours apart. So under the right conditions, why are we able to train a muscle 24 hours apart? Your body can produce adaptations that speed up your recovery. Our next video will detail the very interesting science of this. Also, training under some degree of fatigue, occasionally, may be perfectly fine. The training stimulus is not completely killed and we have data showing that if you train a muscle when it's not fully recovered, recovery isn't exacerbated. I've actually started a Patreon page where I have an extra short video that details this incredibly interesting research. Plus we cover an interesting study that shows us what could happen to muscle and strength gains if you're consistently training a muscle under extreme levels of fatigue. So if you'd like to check out that extra content and help support the House of Hypertrophy, I would be thankful if you consider checking the Patreon page out. Thank you. Until next time.